Okay, Frank Bernardo here for Low Kick MMA. We are back. Um, missed out last week's UFC fight night, Spivak versus Lewis. Um, but I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about that one. UFC 284, Alexander Volkanovsky will take on Islam Makhachev for the light heavyweight, lightweight title, even. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Murdo Todd, as always. How are you doing today, my mate? I'm good, mate. Um, I'm excited for this fight. Um, yeah, I don't know. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited for it. It's a big fight. Big like this is the f- first kind of big fight of the year. Really, really big fight. I know the Glover to share Jamal Hill fight was early on, but this is the proper proper big mega fight of the year. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, really excited for this one. Yeah, well, it is number one pound for pound versus number two. It doesn't really get any bigger than that. Um, although with the UFC's promotion of this fight, you you might be uh, well. Yeah, enough said about that. Um, let's get stuck into it though. Um, Makachev obviously claimed the lightweight title uh, last year, defeated Charles Oliveira. Um, whereas you know Volkanovski's been on this incredible tear at uh, featherweight, beating Max Holloway three times, as well as the Korean Zombie and Brian Ortega. Um, Makachev's the favorite, I think, rightly so. He's the bigger man. Um, I'm slightly younger, but I don't think that'll come into play. Um, yeah, he's big. He's a he's a very heavy wrestler, and he's um very adept at jumping on submissions. Um, however, that being said, like, can you? Is it fair to put you know the pound for pound number one in the world as a as a plus three hundred underdog in this fight? I I, I personally think that's you know. Like yes, Makachev should be the favorite. Plus three hundred. Mm, I'm not sure about that. Is what it not was four hundred now? Oh, sorry, no. Uh, sorry, that is Islam's minus. 400. Islam is minus four hundred. Volk is plus three hundred underdog. Yeah. Uh, what what <clears> what's <throat> what's your read going to this one? Listen, it's just like I think the the price. Yeah, as you're saying, the prices may not be totally accurate, but I just think I just think Makachev's too big, too strong, mm. and it's like for me, it's like. What we expect, Volkanovski's not got huge power. I don't think he's got power to keep Islam off him um, for five rounds. So it's like, what do you expect? He's not got that equal either. So it's like, what he's going to win five? He's going to win three rounds? I, I don't, I don't see it to be honest. I just think, you know, you can probably avoid the wrestling for a bit, maybe, but I just think he'll get to him, and I just think he's going to be too much. I mean, see, see when I see photos of Islam, he's massive. Like his arms are huge. And see the 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 face to face was almost like satire. It mm-hmm. was like I don't know. I just think he, uh, I just think he'll get to him. To be honest, I think he'll have success up in, in the clinch. And I don't know. I, I like Volkanovski. Yeah, I, I hope he gets it done. Um, like I know he's brought in like uh, Craig Jones, and uh, he's brought in some judo guys and yeah. stuff. But see, sometimes it's like with the Charles fight. You worry so much about the rest, and you game plan so much for it. It takes away from almost who you are as a fighter. Um, I don't know if that will happen in this one. I think like um, Volkanovski is so well rounded and he's so talented. If, if it was another lightweight, if it was you know maybe Charles or someone else, you'd probably give him a better chance. But I just think Makachev's just—he's an absolute beast. He's just—he's so good. Um, I, I honestly, I, I think he's—I think he—I uh, think he starts Volkanovski at some point. Uh, what about you? That's interesting. I well, the th- I I don't really disagree with a lot of what you're saying. Like Makachev, yeah, he the big thing is he's big and he's a wrestler, right? So he's he's able to sort of you know they combine together to make him <clears throat> to make the sort of the ultimate equalizer in this fight. Volkanovski, there. I mean, is there a better game planner or, or a better fight fighter who? You know, plays out a game plan better than Volkanovski. I don't know if there is in the entire UFC. He really sticks to it, even in like later rounds and whatnot. Like he's it. He has that sort of mentality and that focus where, like, maybe he does lose a round, but I think he can go back to it. And um, yeah, I don't know. It is a. It's a Makachev definitely should be the favorite, just based on like physicality yeah. and the way his physicality plays into his skill set. Um, the issue is obviously like you could say, oh yeah, Volkanovski needs to keep the range and um and play that sort of game, which 
might be a, a, a good way to beat Makachev, but obviously the issue is uh, Makachev has the, the reach advantage, the, the range. He's got all of that in his favor, and he's not a bad striker from what we've seen so far. Like, um, you know, if it was a kickboxing match, I probably would still favor Volkanovski, but yeah, it does feel like everything's just stacked against him. And yeah, I, I, I can't count him out. I really can't. Volkanovski, he, he yeah. has that dog in him. He really does. He has the, the mentality and he has the well run skill set. It's going to be fascinating to see how he deals with um, Makachev's ground game. That, that's going to be very interesting. Like, will Makachev just, you know, just muscle him to the ground and, and stay on top? Or will Volkanovski be able to get away? He's shown that he's a very good grappler in the past, but like, you know, fighting a Dagestani as well as the Dagestani who's a weight class above you, you know, Makachev could easily fight a welterweight, let's be honest. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've taken a half unit just... on Volkanovski. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the best. Uh, yeah. For... <laughs> I don't blame you, to be honest. But I just think it's like, for me, it's there, there has to, too much has to go right for Volkanovski, for me to yeah. be confident that Volkanovski win. I think it's like, Islam has not got to turn up, but Volkanovski got to be 100% on his game for 25 minutes. It's just mm. like, man, that Charles fight, it was just, we were both on Charles yeah. into that. And he just, it wasn't like, see from, it was like, it wasn't even, see from when it began, it was like, it's not even, it's not even close. Do you know what I mean? Um, it got clocked in the first round, didn't he? Like, or in the first like minute, I think, <clears throat> uh, Makachev hit him with like a hook and, and had him wobbling. But yeah. the thing is like, you, you can't really compare Charles Oliveira to Volkanovski. They are such different fighters. No. Um, but yeah, I, you, again, your point kind of stands in that, like, I don't know, there is something there of Makachev that a lot of these guys just haven't seen before. Like, don't get me wrong, I think I saw this great article on Twitter. It was like, I think people definitely overhyped on like Islam and what he's done and and stuff like that, just because of like this aura and and because he's Khabib. from the Khabib camp and stuff like that. He's not Khabib. Yeah. Let's be realistic here, but. He is still very, very, very good. And I think it's like, see, when I, I would look down at the lightweights, I'm like, who actually beats it just now? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's a tall order for Volkanovski. Fair play to him for doing it because, you know, not a lot of people would. Um, but yeah, I, all the best. I'll wish him the best of luck, but because he will need it. <laughs> oh, he will need it. Yeah. He absolutely but, uh, will. But, you know, he'll have the crowd behind mm -hmm. him. He, he'll go into this fully prepared. There are rumours that Makachev's struggling with a weight cut. Charles Oliveira is flying out to Perth, apparently, as a backup. Um, you know, maybe if Volkanovski does take it to the later rounds, we know his conditioning is exceptional. Um, how will Makachev fare in, in rounds four and five against a guy with the conditioning that Volkanovski has? Bear in mind, Volkanovski barely has to do... Well, not barely, but the weight cut will be significantly less than usual because it's upper weight class, of course. Um, there's a lot of interesting factors. Yes, Makachev is favoured and should be favoured. I do think it it's it just doesn't seem right for the pound for pound number one in the world to be a plus three hundred yeah. underdog, you know. Um, but I see why. Uh, but he's just such a good fighter that I, I have to take a little stab on it, a little one. Yeah, but like, how do you think Islam wins? Though, I think it's it was the decision or. He's such like an opportunist, opportunistic grappler that I, I, I uh, Volk's obviously really hard to sub. We saw that with the uh, Ortega, um, yeah. sort of that whole series of, of the guillotine triangle and stuff. But you know, I, I, I would, I think Makachev has a chance of submitting anyone between the weight class. He almost makes you give him it. He just makes you like he's like, oh, I'm just going to give him a submission. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, yeah. Oh man. But um, great fight. I mean, it's going to be so interesting. And see if it, if it can stay on the feet for a bit, I'll be, um, it'll be really interesting how it plays out. Yeah, it will be. Because Volk probably is the better fighter, but he doesn't have that knockout power, really. Like, I mean, he can knock a man out, but like, um, yeah, I don't know. How will it play? It's going to be an interesting one. Um <laughs> Him my dog growling behind. Um, all right, let's move on to the co-main event. Uh, it's the featherweight interim uh, championship. Yair El Pantera 
Rodriguez. He takes on Josh Emmett. Um, Rodriguez coming in as a slight favorite. Um, minus 165, 162. Yeah. Um, interesting fight. Um, good fight. Probably shouldn't have been made though. Arnold Allen should definitely be one of these two guys. Um, <laughs> I he really should be, let's be honest. Like yeah. I love Rodriguez, but beating Brian Ortega by shoulder injury TKO and prior to that losing to Max Holloway, like does that warrant a title shot? I don't know. I don't even go no I, like why is the interim belt flying anyway? Like Volk what Volk not seems to be main event. gonna be out for over a year. I doubt it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so like yeah, but... I just don't I just don't get it. I it's mm. it's unnecess- it's totally unnecessary in my opinion. I don't know if I agree with that because like these guys well Emmett at very least deserves a title shot, right? He's on a, a <clears> big <throat> win streak right now. Um what is it like five yeah, five fight win streak. Um he, you know, the guys that he's beaten as well, the last three fights, Calvin Case, Danny Gay, and Shane Burgos. At, when they were done, at least, they, those were big wins at the time. They're all ranked opponents, top five, yep. uh, Cater, at least. And Ige might have been when they fought. I can't remember. Um, you know, he's deserving of a fight. And just to give him another number one contender fight against Rodriguez sort of takes away from it a bit. So I think it makes sense. You don't know how long Volk's going to be out for. And hell, if if he beats Makachev, they'd probably just run that back. Oh, see this immediate rematch stuff. I'm just getting the <laughs> pin, man. I can't be bored of it. He doesn't deserve an instant rematch. Man. Like, they probably will, though. I, 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 I bet they would. I'm, yeah, I'm probably at least. Um, but yeah, regardless, we have Rodriguez versus Emmett. Uh, it's a good fight. It, like, it, it's an interesting matchup. Um, I, I find myself siding with Rodriguez, I think. Just based <clears throat> on skill set overall, like you know, he's has more tools at his disposal in the striking department. Obviously, Emmett has that big equalizer in the right hand, but he like the way he over swings, like he, he really like. There's so much power in that punch, but you know, at the same time, he he's just throwing reckless. But like you saw when he was fighting Kater, Kater was blocking the shots. But he's still getting like launched across the ring just from like the yeah. pure power, even though it's hitting his arms. Um, and obviously Emmett also he's a team alpha male guy, he has a wrestling background, and he he's a solid um yeah, solid wrestler when when need be. So that's the thing. It may only be sort of two major parts of his game, being the overhand and, and the wrestling, but those can win you fights. We've seen it so many times. It's it's, it's yeah. the classic uh what do you call it, like boxer wrestler archetype. Just, you know, launch the overhand or, or shoot into a double leg. Um, and the question is, will Yaya Rodriguez be able to deal with that? How much do you think Emmett's going to re- uh, rely on his wrestling? Honestly, I don't know. It's an interesting one. Like, um, I'm trying to think, like, like Yaya, he struggled with, like, mm-hmm. Frankie Edgar, didn't he? When, when Edgar, like, really put on the Edgar. wrestling, pinned him against the side of the cage and just ground yeah. and pounded him to, like... Um, so maybe that is like a big avenue that because the Emmett win maybe, um, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's one that I I, I don't really I don't, I don't know why I'm siding with Yaya to be honest. The more I'm talking, the more I'm like maybe Emmett will just beat him because like is Yaya gonna knock Emmett out? Probably not. Um, like Emmett's very strong and Yaya like even though he's like a flashy striker. He doesn't seem to have that much power in his hands, really. Um, yeah. Like what year he knocked out BJ Penn in 2017? Um, <laughs> Anyone could knock out BJ Penn in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, but I, I've got Yair in this one. I just, I think, I think he wins this. Not, not comfortably, but it's quite a confident pick going with Yair for me. I just think like Cater's game, like especially his stand-up style, Damn it. is like sorry. Emmett's Emmett stand up style is like um, that's what that's the kind of approach that's what Yair wants. He wants someone to fight him like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think um, he's very like crouched over, and I think with Yair's weapons, I think that plays into it. Do you know what I mean? I think with, he 
bobs his head quite a lot. And I think Yair's a, a technical enough, and he's a too much variety in his strike. I think he'll catch him, and I think he'll t- manage to time him and stuff like that. I just think, yeah, I, I just think he's he's far more technical, just a far bigger variety of strikes. And like you were saying, it's a flashy strike that that catches the eyes of judges, whether it's whether it should or not, it it does. Yeah, um, yeah. I just. I think I think he looked okay against Holloway. I think he put up I thought he looked great performance against Holloway. Um, yeah. So and and like the thing with them it is like, did he really win the cater fight? Like, well, you know I mean, like, should he? Des- I know he won it, but should he? Have, did he deserve to win it? Most people say no. And while Cater's is a very good fighter, he's not going to win a title. He's not a top three fighter, mm. in my opinion. So I just think there's. It's like a, I, I, I just, yeah, I think Yair, I think Yair wins this one by, by decision. Uh, it's just like, yeah. what watching some of back some of Yair's footage. I th- right, I'm on the Yair side. I don't know why I'm arguing against him. Yeah, you. But it, it's like, um, I don't know, like when he flows throws some of like the flashy stuff, like the cartwheel kicks and the the rolling thunders and whatnot. A lot of his time, he's ending up on the ground after it. And yeah, he scrambles to his feet against some of these guys, like maybe like Andre Feely or uh, Caceres and whatnot. But like, you know, if, if Emmett really pursues the wrestling in this, if he can just jump on him, pin him down, you know, one yeah. flashy move in the fight might just see him lose a complete round. And like, oh, if he gets pinned up against the side of the cage again, like he did with uh, with Edgar, it could be really bad. There could be really big round winning moments for Emmett. As well as the fact, anyway, if he if he puts the fear of the grappling into Rodriguez early, then that overhand becomes almost like twice as 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 dangerous. Um, I yeah, <laughs> no, I, I'm almost swaying towards the Emmett side. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he keeps the range, and um, and like you say, if he's able to sort of time Emmett stepping in, like you know, some step in knees from your ear. When Emmett's throwing the, the overhand, I think the front kick and the like, knees up the middle, the yeah. straight shot, they're there for him all day. He just needs to stay outside. And then I think Emmett's going to get frustrated. And I think when he does, he's going to come in, move his head, try and throw that overhand. And I think Yair is like, he's a, he's, a, he's a better overall striker, in my opinion. I think when that yeah. happens, oh, yeah, as yeah. the fight goes on, it's just going to get wider and wider, in my opinion, in, in the striking. So, yeah, I, I, I like Yair in this one. I think Josh Emmett's like, a good fighter, he's tough. Both these guys are tough. I think it's, mm. it, I think this will make for an entertaining fight. Um, if it too. hopefully plays out as a, as we as I expect, but um, yeah, I like I like you in this one. What do you, what do you think about Emmett's chance to, of, of wrestling though? Uh, uh, taking a wrestling heavy approach against you, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he can definitely secure some takedowns. I don't know if it's going to be like oh, for 25 minutes, he's going to be able to out grab no. him. I think, but. Do you know what I mean? I think he can definitely mix it in, but I then, I, but then I don't think if he if he goes for it too much and he relies on it too heavily, I think he's just like I don't know. I think yeah, I think he's definitely got the grappling advantage and he should use it, but yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, look, I've, yeah. I've taken a small stab on your ear by decision, um, plus money one fifty, um, but. <laughs> Not and I'm like, mm, might cash out <laughs> all in on Emmett. <laughs> I like that. Um, I like that. You, to be honest. I yeah. Know. I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I think <sighs> even the Ige fight was close with with um, yeah him and Kato. And uh, Ige is a bit washed. Awesome. Well, maybe he is now, but like you know, yeah, it wasn't that long ago? I suppose so. I don't think it wasn't you know. I'm just looking now. It's a tricky one. Twenty, yeah, twenty twenty one actually, yeah. Um, right. Let's move on to the next one then. Uh, let's, I mean, those two are great fights. Let's, let's, let's. No way, no two ways yeah. about it. Those are both great fights, and, and so is this fight as well. Randy Brown versus Jack Della Madalena, JDM versus the Rude Boy. Um, the boy. Brilliant fight, so, really love, is. I love JDM. I actually love him. He's. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but like that's the thing we were talking um before before going jumping in the preview. This is the sort of fight that like can separate Jack Della Madalena from you know being a highly touted prospect and you know the next 
chav cat sort of say like guy yeah. breaking into the the, the rankings and and you know just make causing a stir um i, I it is like the perfect style matchup for madalena i think yeah um randy brown is an excellent boxer i i like i really rate randy brown that's the thing Same. i i think the line in this is well wide i th- i think what is it? Uh, plus two fifty underdog is Randy Brown. Minus three thirty four for Jack Madola. JDM, JDM. Um, <laughs> That's easier, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Randy Brown's on a four fight winning streak. Um, and, Good and he, too. Yeah. Uh, who's it? Trinaldo, Chaos Williams, Jared Gooden, and Alex Calvo Oliveira. Yeah. Um, <sighs> They're both just going to box, I think. It's going to be a sort of boxing match with a little bit of kickboxing in there. Um, I can't imagine even man really running for takedowns unless Brown actually finds himself getting pieced up by JDM's boxing. That's the thing with, with JDM, isn't it? Everyone says his boxing is just like... Well, it's MMA boxing. It's next level sort of stuff. And you, you, you see that in like the performance against uh, Danny Roberts. It just... just oh, the poor guy. The poor He'll guy. He'll be arrested for that. I know. should have been next uh, for that. Yeah. That was that was awful. Um, my biggest bet of last year was, was was JDM inside the distance against Danny Roberts. As 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 much as it hurt me to take it, it just it was always going to happen, wasn't it? He was always going to finish, yeah. um, Danny Roberts. But I don't know. Do you think he can get the finish against Randy Brown? I do. I I do. I just think he he is like I rate him a lot, and I do have a so I do have a soft spot for like very good technique. Like good, yeah. good technical boxers in MMA, and I just think like for me, I think the, for hit for his success, I think he needs to go to the, the body work. I know he, he likes to go to the body, and his he body work it. is fantastic. Yeah, but I think that's going to be the the key for this because Brown's going to want to keep it on the outside. He's going to want to move around. Mm-hmm. Madalena needs to slow him down. He needs to chop at the legs, get him to slow down, and then he's going to catch him. Like if you are backed up. You're you're back against the fence against Madalena. The fight's almost over. It's, he's gonna yeah. land something on you and it's it's over. So he just needs to break he just needs to break him down. I just think over time, I think you'll get to him. Um he's just he's and that's the thing, he's very smart. He's like the ring at the the, the IQ is there. So I think he'll know what to do and I think he can break uh, Randy Brown down. And I like I like Randy Brown, I think he's yeah. really good. But um I like Madalena more. I just think um Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the body, if you invest early. Gets the gets the leg hits going, you know. Just think he'll. Uh, I think he'll, I think he'll get. Him. It, he'll it's get the him. the shot selection, isn't it? <clears throat> like you yeah. say, if he gets Brown or anyone up against the cage, he will. You know his sl- shot selection is so good. He will like, you know, aim to the head, body, head, body, switch it up and down. You never know where the next shot. Is going, but he always knows exactly where it is. Patient, it, not patient so either. yeah, it, it's it's clinical, is what it is. Um, look, the, yeah, the thing that he's gonna have to deal with in this one is the range, isn't it? Right, Brown is huge. He's six foot three. Uh, JDM is five eleven. Brown has a seventy eight inch reach, whereas JDM seventy three. Um, and Brown, right, he's a striker who knows how to use the length. That's what yeah. that's what I like about him, right? He's he's a really you see some guys like right the the ultimate classic example is Stefan Struve, right? The seven foot um heavyweight uh who decided, decided to like fight in clinches and weird stepping elbows and whatnot. It, one of the most <laughs> bizarre fighting styles paired to the body types I've ever seen. But Brown knows how to fight with with the tools that he's got. Um and that, that could really create some interesting um, outcomes in this fight. I think one of... So we talked about uh, Jack's like shot selection and whatnot is great. Um, his boxing, whatever. But he's also very good at adapting. Um, and I think this is one of those where... Well, it really will put it to the test. Um, absolutely no doubt. But yeah, can he adapt to, to, to what Brown's going to throw out there? There is some sort of unorthodox strikes that Brown can throw into the mix sometimes. Um, yeah, look, I I, I favor Jack, but I I do think the line is wide considering yeah. you know I, I, Randy Brown's good. He actually is good. Like yeah, I, yeah. There, there's no two ways about that. And um, 
the Trinaldo the Trinaldo performance was a bit underwhelming. Yeah, knocking Trinaldo out. I think in my opinion. No, how are you going to knock Trinaldo out? No, <laughs> Madalena would not. Madalena would knock Trinaldo out. Fact. Well, Trinaldo is retired now, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Good. He's <about> fifty. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was still winning though. Like, oh. Uh, oh. Um, anyway. Let's have a quick look at Trinaldo. Yeah, like Trinaldo, <laughs> he's two and two in his last four, <laughs> which is mental. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. Favor Jack Della Madalena, but very interesting. What's the fight. Difference? Minus one thirty-five. Uh it was minus one twenty this morning, but I haven't taken it. Maybe I will. Uh, is it, minus, it's minus not... one twenty-five. Yeah, I don't know. It's um. It's a tricky one. If it if it was like if it was a bit it was a bit better, I'd definitely be putting on the uh, yeah. the difference for me. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's the end of the good fun, fights for the, the rest of the card. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up next, it's a heavyweight fight: Justin Taffer versus Parker Porter. What a fight! <laughs> Finally, some good matchups. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Justin Tartha is a fun brawler. Uh, I trains with Mark Hunt, I believe. Uh, his, his brother, Junior Tartha, was meant to be on this card, but fell out due to injury or something like that. Um, he, he's a fun fighter. There's no two ways about it. Maybe well, he's not the most experienced. He's got a 5 and 3 record, but um, he's a fun brawler with power in his hands. He's taking on Parker Porter. Um, who is a fighter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> he's got a 13 and 7 record. He's not, it, no, to be fair, he's he like, has a not, he, he's a better record than Justin Taffer, so like, yeah. to be honest, he's got better wins than him. Yeah, he does. He does. His last loss came to Jelton Almeida, and there's no, no shame, no shame in losing to Jelton Almeida at all. Prior to that, three fight winning streak Alan Bodeau, Chase Sherman, and Josh Parisian. So he's kind of one of the better. Low level heavyweights, yeah, like, like that like, kind of that kind of like Chase Sherman kind of level. Yeah, he's all right at that level, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I mean, if you look at his UFC tenure, he's got the wins to but over Bado, Sherman, and Parisian, and then losses to Chris Dorcas and Jelton Armadia. No shame. That that that's. I think that sort of sum- summarizes the sort of f- fight that Parker Porter is really. <clears throat> like, he probably could even touch the the very. You know, he's probably like a top twenty fighter, isn't he? He's probably like, yeah, probably just good enough to get to that point. And then, I mean, how old is the man now? Um, Thirty seven. I mean, maybe improved, maybe not. He's also got a win and a loss in Bellator. Back in 2013, and a loss to John Jones in his third ever pro fight. We're just saying this off camera. WC WC three, 36 seven KO loss to John Jones. Um, I, I'm taking the tougher side on this. Uh, he's a brawler. He hits really hard. Um, uh, he's, he's super durable. Uh, decent cardio in front of home crowd. Um, I favor him, but uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was when I was doing tape, I couldn't. I actually couldn't bear to do too much of it. it was so bad. Like, um, like, yeah. I mean, I pr- I probably put Taffa inside the distance. He's younger, uh, as you say, in front of the home crowd. He's also probably taken a lot less damage in his career, so a bit fresher and stuff. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I don't mind Park, uh, Parker Port in this one. Um, like. I think he can. I think he'll be competitive for a bit, but I, I think I think Taff will probably, at some point, will, will land that blow. Um, I'm not going to take anything on this. I just I refuse to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's yeah. I mean, it's not the best. I mean, listen, it's not the highest skill level fight, but, but it actually should be pretty entertaining. Uh, I think both these yeah. guys will come out swinging. So it'll be entertaining for how long it lasts. But I see Taff if it's going to go, if it's going to be. Swang and banging. I think uh, I think Tapper gets it done. I think he he lands that shot. So I think Tapper's mm. inside the distance. What is it? Plus one fifty. I haven't checked, but I imagine something around those lines. Um, yeah, plus one fifty. You yeah. know what fight I would like for Tapper if he wins this though? Chris Barnett. I reckon that would be great fun. 
Stop giving him fights. Wait, he's he winning. He's winning. It's embarrassing. He's got a better UFC record than Justin Tarford. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on. Um, a yeah, we don't need to talk about this fight anymore. No, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not said, not said, not said. Jimmy Crute, uh, he's taking on Alonzo Manifield in a light heavyweight clash. Um, all right, this fight isn't awful. It's not awful. Like it's, it's no. Jimmy Crew. There was a period where he looked like he was going to be something special, or at least something decent by uh, two hundred five two hundred five pound standards. Um, obviously, he had the weird um, leg injury versus Anthony Smith. Uh, sort of his legs were shut down on him. Carried on trying to fight, but the the doctor stopped it in the end, and then was sparked by uh, the now UFC light heavyweight champion Jamal Hill. Um, <laughs> Uh oh yeah, wait, how much action did you because we, we haven't been on camera since that that, that card actually. I did end up putting quite a lot of money into it. I yeah, to be fair, I didn't have a good night on, on, on that one either. So um but, oh, man. Yeah. was it the Lauren Murphy batch fight oh, I had um, I had Andrade inside the distance. I, yeah. That how was that not? I don't know. I don't know. I know. Absolutely not. Yeah. There were a few. Craig got knocked out as well. God. <laughs> poor, He's just taking the piss now. <laughs> poor one out for Polly Craig. Um, yeah. But Jimmy Creek, uh, he is a sizable favourite against yeah. Menafield. Uh, now, I know we have differing opinions on this. We're speaking about this briefly off camera. Yeah. Um, go on, what's your read on it? Let... Well, listen, I, I think Crew is the far better grappler. And I think if he gets if he gets the fight there like i think he wins do you know what i mean but he has to i think he has to grab but like manafield hits so hard like he hits unbelievable he's an app like frank hates him frank <laughs> slagged him off for saying really bad things about him don't hate him. About, no. <laughs> <laughs> i just I think, think... Like, Cruz... go on go on but oh, okay that's... he's not a great striker manafield most no. of it He's a top control wrestler who has good ground and pound. He looks like he's a physical specimen. Oh, he is, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, he's not one of those guys who, like, yes, he knocked out Misha Serkinov, but who hasn't knocked out Misha Serkinov lately? Like, and then what? The win before that was against um, Asgar <laughs> Morozov. Is that even his real name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and prior to that, he, he lost a decision to William Knight. Um, you know, like, I don't know. I don't... I. He's a top control wrestler who has big power. Yeah, maybe he can knock most people out with, with that that power, but I think the people that he's knocking out on the feet are low-level opponents um, or someone like Serkinov. Serkinov's not technically not a bad fighter, but he's just deteriorated to the point where he can't compete at the, the top of two or five pounds anymore. Um, I think Kroot's more than capable of, of taking Benefield on the feet. I think he's a better striker. Maybe Manafield has better power, but Kroot's genuinely a better striker. I think he can just out out fight him on the feet. I reckon he's probably knocking out on the feet. Uh, I think Kroot needs to Kroot needs to shoot as soon as he can. No, uh, he's coming up. Yeah, he does. He actually does. What? Hundred percent. You just, cannot no. compare Jamal Hill striking. Look, I know you don't even rate Jamal Hill, but Jamal Hill is levels above Alonzo Benefield in the striking department. There's no two ways about that. You also forget this is light heavy, and light heavy never makes any sense. Uh, it's true. So, like, all like, yeah. The, all the results make no sense. But I think, like, Cruz coming off stop his losses, right? He's coming off a big, like, how long is it, 14 months? Uh, 13. 13 That's months. He's coming off. Like, if he's, if he's cold on the feet, and like he stays with Menafield, Menafield casts him. He's knocking him out. Like I, I don't know. I, I just have, you know, I, I just have this image of him knocking crew out, and I can't get past it. So, yeah, Menafield inside the distance. Well, I reckon Menafield will shoot on him. I don't think he'll even try to strike. I reckon he'll shoot immediately, and because that's his route to victory. Remember when he fought Morozov? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was he got fucking clipped on the feet, and then immediately shot for a massive double leg where he. Got him in a crucifix and ground pounded him. Like, 
I don't know. I I I I'm, think Kruger has all the tools. I'm not saying like, oh, I really rate men in the field, and I think like, like I just, I just, I don't know. I just feel like inside the distance, I just think he gets it done. And you know what's matter. Flip it. <laughs> <laughs> don't actually. <laughs> no, uh, I, um, no, I rate like I rate Crew a lot. I I think he's decent. I think he's a good grappler, and I think he will win if he gets there. But I just don't know after this much time out and stuff. He is younger though. Um. I think he spoke about getting sober and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So it'd be an interesting one, I think. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Ben Phillips. Just fair enough. Well, I'll, I'm definitely on the Chris. Um, <laughs> what should be a point kickboxing? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's the main card of UFC two eight four. Um, I just I'd like to touch on Tyson Pedro versus Melissa Bukowskis. Um, yeah. it is just a, a fun. It's the feature prelim. Um, Pedro obviously he he was out for ages, wasn't he? He he took like a four year layoff. Um, yeah, and then came back and has since uh, knocked out Ike Villanueva and Harry Hunsucker. Uh, Neither particularly Poor high Harry Hansucker. He's been killed by everyone. Yeah, man. I liked him as I've interviewed Harry Hansucker quite a few times and he's a lovely guy. He's just like yeah, yeah but he he had some hard fights. Um yeah. Uh so yeah, he's uh Pedro, yeah, two fight winning streak on those two fights. But like both those fights against very similar opponents. Um and Modesto Spacalcus is a very different sort of style of opponent, you know. Pedro and Unsucker, they're both sort of stocky, built guys with, with big, uh, heavy overhand shots. Bukowskis is tall. Um, he's uh, not like a point fighter, but like he's a more rangy fighter. He doesn't rely on just one big shot. Loves spinning back kick to the body. Um, obviously, he was cut from the UFC uh, after going on the three fight losing streak that finished with that um, oblique kick from Khalil Roundtree to the knee. Um, yeah, ruthless that. Uh, but he went back to Cage Warriors, defeated Lee Chadwick, um, and then captured the Cage Warriors title uh, by knocking out Chuck Campbell. Uh, that was only a month and a week ago or so. Um, and is now back into action, taking on Pedro. Um, look, the line is, is heavily in Pedro's favour. Maybe fair enough, but like, let's be honest. Hunsucker and Villanueva are not comparable to Bukowskis. They're just not... They're so... a yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bukowskis is a, a very solid fighter. Yes, he lost to Roundtree, but he took uh, Michelle Oleksiejczuk to the distance in a split decision. I probably thought he won that fight, in all honesty. Um, yeah, I, I think he'll... a good fighter, too. I'll rate him as well. Oleksiejczuk is really good. Yeah, like, like he, he's a super solid fighter. Oh, I think it's going to be a super competitive fight. I'm very interested to see how it goes. Both men have finishing potential. Um, I'm on the Bukowski side just because value. And also, he's a fighter that I like. He's a really, like, I don't know, he's a sound guy, cool story. Um, coming through the Cage Warriors circuit. Um, and, you know, he's a heavy, heavy underdog. So I, I'm taking him. Um, I don't know if you've got anything else to say on this. Or should we just move straight on to the log and dot? Lock yeah, and I mean... Dog tonight. Like looking at the card, there's honestly not, not much that like no like ge- like generally I think I'm gonna go pretty light on this one. I don't know I don't break a lot of it to be honest. Yeah, yeah I think I'll play the whole. I'm probably gonna play the whole main card, and then not really touch the rest of it. I think. Yeah, sounds about right. To be I'm gonna go. Are we gonna miss out the heavyweight one? Volk, Rodriguez, JDM, Tafa, Crook, and Modestus. Um, but let's move on to the the final final segment, the closing segment. Dog of the night, lock of the night. Who are you going for this week, mate? Uh, dog is going to be Alonzo Menafield. <laughs> what the goat? And <laughs> my lock will be Tukhov. Wasn't it? How did you say it? Uh, Zabira to Yeah, yeah Tukhov. That's it. Um, guys, just a different. Just a. Completely, just a massive disparity class and experience. So yeah. I think he gets that done pretty quickly. I think he's like minus five fifty, and also maybe Makashev is locked the night as well. Either one, either one. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think Tahugo's a good shout. He's fucking the guy making his debut. Um, and he's lost. Like, the guy making his debut is lost. It's like, yeah. record not great. Look, looking at it, you know. Fair enough. Solid. Uh, for me, underdog, I'm taking Elise Reed to defeat Luma Lukbumi. Huge Lukbumi fan, but um, Elise Reed's one of the better strikers, I guess non-ranked strikers in the division. She's genuinely good, just hasn't got much of a, a wrestling game or a, a grappling game at all, to be honest. But Lukbumi's going to try fight her on the beach or clinch her up and whatnot, and you know it's going to be a striking battle. And um, I mean, Reed's a massive underdog again, like, plus 200, 225. Um, I think it's great value on her in this fight. Um, and then... Lock of the Night, I'm going to take Jack Della Maddalena. I think. Yes, that's, yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. That's fair. Um, a solid pick. Yeah. All right, then. Um, that's us. What's for... next? next week? Oh, it, it, we've got a thriller next week. We've got UFC Fight Night, Santos versus Blanchfield. A uh, an event truly stacked. one of the worst things you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, well, like if we hadn't, fights, don't watch it. If we hadn't just seen UFC Fight Night Lewis versus Spivak, uh, <laughs> it would, but now it's just at this point we're getting used to it. Like, um, yeah, do you see on like the advertisement? They're like Jim Miller versus TBD, <laughs> it's next week, mate. It's like, it's like Jim, he's uh, just gonna make an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> do an open workout that's it <laughs> still be more entertaining than half the fights on I mean, no doubt I, Jordan Wright in the fucking call me yeah that's outrageous that really is um, but yeah that, that's that's the nature of UFC Apex events these days it just that's how it is um, oh well is after he- well, sorry, I'm just looking at Jordan Wright. Jordan Wright's a middleweight, and he's fighting a heavyweight. I like heavyweight. Yeah, he's moved in between both. To be fair, um, uh, I'm not gonna lie. After that, it... UFC Fight Night, Krylov versus Span. Oh, these are uh, actually there's a few fun fights on that one. We've got like Augusto Sakai is on there. Andre Feely's on there. Odell Spawn. Uh, Tatiana Suarez is back on that card. Oh, Andre Muniz versus Brandon Allen. That's a fun fight. And then it's um, Jones after that. Is it the Jones one after that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, once we get there, then you've got like a nice run because Jones versus Garn, uh, UC Fight Night, Jan versus Devalish Feely, Edwards versus Usman 3, Vera versus Sam Hagen, Pereira versus Alessandro, oh. Holloway versus Allen. Wow, that is a that's what a nice a run. run. Yeah. Around. Holloway versus Allen. Oh, you know, I, I'm putting it all in on Allen in that fight. <laughs> oh, man, I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm curious to see how the cookies happen. Like how, how wide it'll be. For, for like... Yeah, I'm very interested. But yeah, well, a little rough patch, and then we get into a, a great period of, of, of some amazing fights coming up um, in the sort of latter half of spring. Uh, tune in next week for the exhilarating UFC fight night Santos versus Blanchfield I uh, hope you enjoyed the watch and yeah tune in next week make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news event previews and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA